Lord, we thank you that we begin a journey supporting each other as a learning community so that we can grow and find ways of coping which are healthy and meaningful. Bless our conversation and our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. So welcome. I'm really delighted to introduce to you the leaders and speakers for this evening's presentation and the small groups that will follow, Jennifer Wilson and Beth Tuttle. Jennifer Wilson and Beth Tuttle are from Anxiety Global. Anxiety Global is on a mission to help all of us to build a positive relationship with our anxiety. They believe that when you strengthen your mental fitness, anxiety becomes a positive tool for overall mental wellness and happiness. Anxiety Global provides anxiety education and awareness. The focus is to teach methods that relieve the symptoms of anxiety quickly and effectively. Beth is a wellness practitioner along with Jennifer Wilson, who is an association of Christian counselors, professional coach, and together they have created this anxiety global education platform to combine their coaching, educating, and passion for mental fitness. Both ben Beth and Jennifer believe that reducing anxiety starts with conscious mental exercises done daily. The methods are easy, consistent, but, but staying consistent sometimes is hard. And so tonight we're gonna begin to manage our anxiety instead of anxiety managing us. And so let me ask you to welcome Jennifer and Beth. Let's give them a high five through the chat and we turn the time over to them. Thank you, Reverend O'Connor. Appreciate that. Um, I'm actually going to ask if we can not share the screen, but to to see all of us, so that those of us I know we've got several screens, but if that would be okay, I'm not sure who's there. We go, because we're going to show you a few of these techniques um, that we we're going to talk about breath. We're going to talk about using our hands. So I think it's good that we can all see each other this way. Um, Beth and I are very happy to be here this evening. And like the bio talked about, we're gonna talk about really practical and simple tools tonight. And we believe that when you can build that into your life, that you can really use these tools to live the life that God intended. They're so simple, it is just like physical exercise. And I always remember, I went to a physical trainer once, just once because I don't enjoy being um, pushed hard on exercise. And she was talking about ab exercises, which is the least favorite exercise of everybody to do. Everybody hates to do sit-ups. And she was explaining why it was so important because it's not just our abs, but it's also our lower back that gets strengthened when we do those ab exercises. And I'll never forget this. She said, there's hundreds and hundreds of ways to do ab exercises, yet no one does them. <laughs> and it feels very similar when you talk about ways to reduce anxiety, things that we know to do, hundreds and hundreds of them, yet they're still so difficult to build into an exercise routine. So when Beth and I started working together, and really looking at the hundreds of ways that you can teach people to reduce their anxiety, we knew that for some people, they, this was all new for them. So we can't throw hundreds and hundreds of different techniques at people. We need to be able to get a starting point going. So we've come up with, with what we call our seven methods, and it's really that starting point to beginning these exercises. 
So for many of you, you may be doing things daily, like a daily Bible practice, daily prayer. These exercises will actually enhance that daily practice. We believe that. If some of you don't have that daily practice, again, this will be a great starting point. If you or anyone you know struggles with panic attacks, we believe that several of these can stop a panic attack as it starts. We, we believe they're that effective and they are so simple. So we're really, this week, we're gonna take you through the first four of those. We're gonna then next week take you through the last three. And on the third week, we're gonna bring in a guest speaker with us, Kimberly Fitton, who is gonna help tie these really practical tools to the deeper meaning and um, really deepen them along with faith practices. So that's where we go. And then after that, we're going to, the, the whole series is going to really deepen more into that faith part of it. So we're starting out with the practical and then, and then really getting into the why so that you can develop your unique specific routine that's going to work for you. And that's adaptable because what works one day may not work again the next day. I mean, that's how stress and anxiety happens. It's, it's different. So some days this is going to work really well. And some days you may have to do something else, but the overall goal is to really manage your anxiety versus it managing you. Um, first, I want to just mention the book, so Overcoming Fear and Anxiety. The book is, is one of the hallmarks of what the Myrtle Collaboration team has used to create the series. As you can see, I'm a fan of it. I read a lot of things on anxiety, and this is just really laid out nicely. So if you are a reader and you get the chance, I highly recommend that. What I love about Dr. Peters Tanksley is that she really shares that it's not all or nothing. So think about when you start a new diet plan or a new physical exercise plan. If you go in, I'm going to do it all perfectly, it's, it's a high likelihood for failure. And so that's the same here. We're going to talk a lot about, you know, trying this one day or adding this to something else instead of going all or nothing. Okay, I'm gonna do all seven of those things uh, Jennifer and Beth said. It, that, that could be failure. So really being gentle and, and, and we'll show you how to do that. So I think I caught everything I wanted to say there just to kick that off. Um, when we go into high schools, what we do, this is actually kind of fun. So Beth and I will stand in front of a class, pre-COVID, of course, we would stand in front of a class and we'd start our presentation and I'd have my cell phone in my hand. So you know these things, our anxiety, I mean, it, the anxiety has gone up tenfold since these things were created. And if you think about kids in the next generation, they have had these from a very young age. And that much stimuli, they don't know any different. So I will hold the cell phone and we'll start our presentation. And then I act like I get distracted and oh, my mom is, what is she doing? And you know, I'll name off some of the social media things. And, and I, I go through a whole series and as if I've forgotten the classes there, you know, I'm just completely in my phone and I'm, I'm working myself up, clearly creating anxiety. And then Beth stops me, you know, and she says, okay, did you see how quickly she worked up her anxiety? We do this whole demonstration and, What's interesting about that is we will do five classes in a row. I know that I'm acting. I have it all, all planned. We've done it several times at several different schools. And every single time I do it, even though I'm acting, my heart rate goes up, my blood pressure goes up, my body doesn't know I'm acting. Even though I'm intellectually, I, I know it, we've done it a ton of times before. My body does not know all five times. And that is because I've turned the stress response on. Yeah, so um, that's where I'm going to jump in here and talk more about the stress response. So when we're stressed out, there is a part of our brain called the amygdala. And I like to explain it like the 911 system of our body or our brain. So when we stress out, that is going off like an alarm. And when that goes off, our bodies are flooded with stress hormones, cortisol being one of them. And for most of us, when we're stressed out, we can um, 
find some place in our body. Like Jen said, even though she is faking or acting, doing this with her phone, her heart rate's increasing, her breath. So if you think about when you stress, you might think like, okay, I feel it in my stomach or my chest. Maybe you get tension in your neck or um, headaches. So many times we're so used to feeling that in our body, like it's normal, so we ignore those signs. And I kind of explained that like if you were in your car and the um, engine light came on, check engine, if you just ignore that, your car eventually is just gonna shut down and not work. So that's what we're doing with our bodies. Our bodies are sending us signals all of the time but we're ignoring those, just thinking, you know, I always have an upset stomach when I'm with this person or during my job, I get headaches, so it's normal. But what me and Jen want to teach you is that that's your first sign. When your body is giving you that signal, that's a time to use one of the tools that we'll show you in a little bit to manage and turn that stress response off. So what most people don't realize is when you're in the stress response, the blood is actually leaving your forebrain. So it's leaving your brain, it's going to your arms and your legs because it thinks that you need to either run from danger or fight. So our bodies are all wired to protect us with the stress response. So for our ancestors, that was great. They're in a cave, a saber toothed tiger comes in, they either have to fight it or run. Well, nowadays our brains haven't evolved with the technology in this fast pace. So if you are stuck in traffic, you are in an argument with a, a relative, a significant other, um, maybe you have a health issue, something going on like that, our brain still thinks at that time when we're stressed that we are literally in danger. They think it's a, it thinks it's a threat for our life. So we have to figure out how to manage our stress better. Otherwise what happens is stress response actually shuts off our immune response. So when our immunity is down, that's when illness and disease sets in. So the root causes of stress, if you think about it, are usually health, finances, relationships, our job or career. So whatever you're stressing about, all roads usually lead to one of those things. And then you add COVID on top of that, which has magnified all of those root um, stressors. And now we're, most of us have been isolated. We are feeling lonely, or maybe we're now stuck in a household with more people than we're used to being with all the time every day. So it's increased arguments. Um, divorce has increased. There's been an increase in alcohol sales. Um, people are having more issues with sleep. Um, the, we're worried about catching COVID or a loved one catching it, maybe someone dying from it. Uh, the economy, where's that going to be when COVID is over? Um, so many people have lost their jobs. So, so much of this um, is impacting us on such a higher level and it's increasing all of us uh, with our anxiety and our stress. Um, yeah, so I'll let, I'll let Jen, you pick up from there a minute. Yeah, and I was thinking so much about the COVID magnifier and that skit that we do in the high school. So, you know, we I'm, I'm working myself up into that higher heart rate and raising the blood pressure. But, you know, when you're in your home and you're thinking about quarantine or or you're just, it, it, it's a, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm stuck saying it. I said I wasn't going to say new normal, but, you know, finding the new normal it can look a lot different. It can be sleeping more. It can be forgetfulness. It can be anger and frustration or, ir or irritability, which are not the classic things that we often think of with anxiety. With anxiety, we often think that um, you're fearful or you're fear feeling shy. I mean, any of that strong emotion that is blocking you from doing what you most want to be doing or living in the way you want to be living is really all part of the anxiety, the fear, the overwhelm. Um, you know, we often, we often say, oh, well, you know, I'm getting to that age where I'm forgetful. Well, sometimes it's just overthinking about something that you don't have a lot of control over. So oftentimes I think we get too easily, um, swayed to thinking, oh, this is just the way it is. Like Beth was saying, and um, what we're really getting is a signal that anxiety is a signal and it shows up in a lot of different ways. And, and so trying to find ways to 
calm yourself will also help overall health, connecting that mind and body. So the very first method that we talk about is actually an awareness. So this is number one. And in all of the things that we've mentioned, everybody I think has been told at one time or another, when they are upset, excited, just take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. Taking a deep breath will help. And how many times have you found yourself knowing that that's the exact thing that you need to do, but you just don't do it? I have had mental conversations with myself, like, I know I should breathe right now, but I'm just too mad or I'm just too frustrated. Well, what is actually happening is you're not arguing with yourself just because you want to argue with yourself. You literally are already holding your breath. And so much of the time, we don't realize that as humans, we hold our breath so much of the day. And so that's why we will create a mental argument about taking that deep breath in because we can't even, we can't, we can't make the connection because we're already holding our breath. So the first thing that we always say is start to breathe out. Just, and the minute, I, I encourage you all to practice that right now and see how much, of, how much of your breath you might actually be holding in, because I think it will surprise you. And then see how much easier it is to take a big deep breath in. And especially if you're feeling stressed or anxious, or even, even if you're watching the news, which I think we don't recommend, but you know, sometimes we have to stay informed, you know, just making sure that we're breathing, conscious, consciously breathing out. The minute we do that, now all of a sudden we, our lungs are open enough to take that big healing breath in. And Beth is gonna describe how to really get that calming breath. Yeah, so a lot of times when we go into schools or, or when I go and speak, I will tell people that um, they're not breathing correctly or to take a proper breath. And everyone's like, I breathe every day. I've been breathing my entire life. Of course I'm breathing correctly. But most of us, if you put your hand, one hand on your chest and one hand on your stomach and you take a breath and you're, and you're not thinking about this, you just take your normal breath, you'll see that your hand on your chest probably barely moves, but the one on the stomach usually doesn't move at all because we're breathing so shallow, we most shallow. Most of us breathe just in our upper chest. We don't even use 50% of our lung capacity. So what you wanna do is have a hand on your stomach, one on your chest, and when you take that breath in, your hand on your stomach should expand out. So your stomach should actually expand like a balloon. So if you try that and take a deep breath, and I usually take the breath in through my nose and my belly is expanding. And then when you let that out, your belly goes back to a relaxed state. But that is actually a proper breath. If you were in um, a stress response and you did three of those breaths where you were actually taking that breath down to your belly, three of those breaths can turn that stress response off. So I will throughout the day, sometimes I'll set an alarm on my phone or just, uh, you know, I'll think throughout the day, gosh, I have not taken a proper breath and I will stop and actually take those breaths. Some people, when I get one to groups, they cannot make that hand move on their belly. So then I tell them for practice to lay on the ground and put a book on your stomach. And the, the key is to get that book to move up and down. So we're wanting to try to fill your stomach up like a balloon when you're breathing. And that's actually what a proper breath would look like. And that's the other reason why um, it's so easy for us to get anxious because when we are anxious and stressed, we are usually taking that, that, those shallow breaths. That's how we go out throughout our whole day. Usually we are, like Jen said, either holding our breath or we gotta just <sighs> exhale. And then we do take those nice slow breaths where you're filling your belly up with air. And then I'm just gonna go into a, a couple of the other tools that we use. So I am actually um, an emotional freedom technique practitioner. So that stands for EFT, or some people call it tapping. So we're actually tapping on points, which today I'm going to show you on your fingers and hands, acupoints on our body. So I like to call it acupressure or acu, yeah, acupressure without the needle. So we're going to just use our fingertips and our hands to tap on these points. And they're, they're basically energy pathways 
in our body. And if you think about it, um, like an EKG or an EEG, that's just reading the electrical signals in our body because we are all made of energy. And these energy pathways carry energy to all our cells and organs, and they run off our fingertips. So with tapping, there are many ways to do it. If you actually Google it now, you're gonna find many versions, but for what me and Jen are teaching, we wanna just teach you simple ways that you could use it throughout your day. Any age, I've done this with as young as two years old, and I've done it with an 89 year old. So there's no age involved here. It's really simple and all you're gonna do is, you can see my hands in here, you're tapping, you're using your thumb of your hand and you're tapping where, like where you'd get a hangnail. It's on the sides of your fingers right here. So you're taking your thumb, I call it like kind of like a ladder and you're just tapping like this on your fingers. So each one of these are main acupoints in our body. When we tap on these points, on our fingers, you could, and people will say, well, how many times do I do it? So you could either, sometimes I'll just tap once like this, down, and then back up. Sometimes I'll tap on each finger. There's not a right or wrong way. Every time you're tapping on part of, on your fingers here, it's literally sending a signal to your brain that you're safe and you're okay. So if you're really anxious about something, or you're stressed, you, or maybe it was you just got into an argument with someone and you're you're really fired up. Whatever that emotion is, if you just started tapping your fingers, you're tapping, telling your brain, I'm safe and okay, but it's like, wait a minute, I'm really mad about this or I'm really stressed. So we're almost like tricking the brain. We're rewiring the brain. And there's a lot of, um, I've been doing this for over a decade, but there are, it's been around since the 80s and there is several research papers, science backed, how this literally shuts off that stress response, just simply tapping your fingers like this. So I would recommend, like I said, if you are stressed, you would just start tapping, move that energy, get that, that brain um, where the, the blood's going back to your brain. Remember I said, when we're stressed, the blood is leaving our forebrain. This is a way to turn off that stress response, get the blood back to our brain so we can think more clearly, um, focus, uh, let our bodies release that stress. So we're not, um, me and Jen never say, um, you know, you, you shouldn't be that angry or you shouldn't be that upset or anxious. We're, life is going to show up. We're going to have these emotions, but we have to figure out how to manage them, how to move them through our body. They're meant to move through. They're not meant to, for us to hold on to them. So that is one way of tapping your fingers this way, or you can tap right along the side of your hand. Some people will call it the karate chop point because you think of someone karate like chopping wood. You're just tapping right on the side of your hand. So the other way to explain it is um, maybe some of you have heard of ref reflexology where every part of our hand is connected to some organ or part of our body. When we're tapping here, it's actually connected, even though it seems crazy to think this is connected to our small intestine, but this point is, this energy point is connected to our small intestine. So when we're tapping this, usually when you're anxious, you'll get that knots in your stomach, um, our bowels might not work like they normally do, this will calm it down. So whatever feels more comfortable, you tapping, I know Jen likes tapping this, I'll let her, <laughs> kind of say how she uses it, but here, or your fingers, and then people will say, well, how often do you do it? Well, I say, if you're stressing about something, start tapping, let that move through. But sometimes when I'm just going through my day, uh, maybe I'm checking emails, I might be watching something on TV, and I'm not stressed at all. I will tap, not the whole time, but I will find myself tapping, because the more you do this, or are tapping this, it's literally rewiring your brain to be calm, to be relaxed, to be in that state of peace. So I will just do it throughout my day. I'm usually, I wake up in the morning, I get out of bed as I'm walking down my stairs. I'm just tapping my fingers as I'm walking down. I'm not stressed about anything. I'm not anxious. I'm just telling my body, this is the state that I want to be in, this calm, relaxed state. The more you do it, you'll find that those things that were triggering you won't trigger you as much. 
They, it just will not seem stressful to you because like I said, you're literally rewiring those neural pathways in your brain. And the, the normal way you stress or are anxious, that's changing that pattern by tapping. I'll let you kind of jump in, Jen, how you use yeah. it. Yeah, well, and we know, we all do a lot of these things when we're, when we're feeling anxious anyway. So when we're in the high school, the kids will say, well, I'm already doing this with my hands or I'm already. And one of the ways that Beth and I really got to working together is I have a nephew who is um, autistic and he was in class, he was pulling on his hair and he was pulling his hair out. And I thought, Ooh, I wonder if the tapping would help um, with Cohen and, and Beth worked with him. And so our whole family actually uses tapping for, and we have a lot of fun with it because kids, um, you know, kids really take to it quickly. And so I will find myself tapping. Well, when I public speak, even if I'm in front of a group, so right now I can be tapping and you guys don't know on zoom. So it's great on zoom. Um, if I'm in a meeting on zoom, I mean, a lot of times I'm tapping. Um, I tend to get ideas quickly and want to jump in. And so I'll tap just to kind of manage myself so that I can pay attention and listen to what somebody's saying or to finish that. Um, but with our family, sometimes my husband tends to have a little road rage when he's driving and he gets frustrated. And so I'll be over in the driver's seat or the passenger seat tapping and he'll say, are you tapping? And I'm like, maybe. And he's like, is it because of my driving? And I'll say maybe, and then he'll, he'll be better with his driving. So it's kind of become a part of our whole family, but it is, it's, it's really helpful um, to just, what I say from the coaching psychological standpoint is anytime we can bring a pause, because what's going on with anxiety is our brain's racing and it's racing the same thought over and over and over again. So doing something physical with your hands creates a pause in that thinking. Okay. And then what's beautiful and where I said it could complement. So say you have a daily prayer practice, you know, and I was thinking about it. If you're still, if you, if you use prayer hands, this is the same idea. It's just, it's just gentle, gentle tapping. And obviously when you're in prayer, that's a relaxed state. Um, and, and you're really going in with God. And so then when you're in that anxious moment, you can just bring those fingers together like that. And it brings you back to that morning prayer or evening prayer, or that that's what Beth was talking about is using this in that daily practice that's already working for you so that when you're out and about in your day, you can get back to that feeling of Zen, um, that moment of just peace and grace that you had with what, what your daily practice may be already this brings you back to it when you're on a work call, when you're um, trying to talk to one of your children about something that you know is going to stress them out and you can be tapping while you're getting ready to have that conversation. It keeps you calm as you're doing that. Um, and, and we're going to encourage you to talk more about that as we break you up into smaller groups. Um, but I just wanted to say one more thing. So method number one for us is the awareness that you hold your breath. Method number two is that proper breath that Beth described. Then method number three is the tapping. And method number four goes along with that, which is really just any kind of physical movement. There, so, so if your anxiety is showing up in the form of maybe depression or just not feeling like doing anything and you find yourself stuck on the couch, and you know you want to, you know you should get up and you should clean or you should get up and, um, you know, anything, right? It's amazing what just, I mean, just a shake moment can do. Just anything to just get your, your movement happening, right? Again, creating that pause and that thinking, that lethargic. We really, I think, underplay how much physical can affect our mental and vice versa. And so I really love a dance party, but, but, but truthfully, it's as simple as just ugh, a shake, right? And our body tends to do this anyway. And Beth has got one more technique that can kind of just help shake things up. Yeah. And I was going to say off what you were saying, Jen, if you think about, um, we've all seen the shows with animals and one animal's being chased by the other. And when it gets away, you see it shake. It's animals intuitively know once they shake 
then they're right back into that calm state. Um, so it's probably not something you'd want to do just out in public or, or at work, but like Jen said, <laughs> you could just have just moving movement like that or shaking will move that energy through your body and break up that anxiety. Um, and then another way you could do it besides we showed the tapping and tapping here. And this one is really great too for, I mean, adults can use it, but kids could use this. You could do it with your child. You're just, you're grabbing each finger and you're just pulling off. Pretend you're pulling off that anxiety, the anger. So you're, you're just grabbing fingers and pulling. And as simple as all of these finger things that I've showed you, I, like I said, I've done it for over a decade, brought it into schools for everyone from two to 89. And when you start applying them, you will be amazed at how quickly things will shift or that you will get control of your emotions or your anxiety just simply by by holding and pulling um, or that tapping. Like I said, it's just we need to find a way to move that energy. Um, Eastern medicine is now has really science with Western and Eastern are coming together on um, things around the energy system and how the body works. And there's so many things we don't realize yet. But the thought is if our energy is stuck, if we think about when you someone does something to you or you're you're angry or upset and, and you don't say anything, you don't have a discussion about it, you kind of bury it. And then another thing happens and another thing and we they just keep piling up. And then finally we just we lose it. Um, that's just building up in our energy system. So the more you can get a hold of it when it happens and process it by tapping and moving the energy through, you won't have that build up. You're going to keep your immune system up and it's going to keep you from that illness and disease and help you stay more clear and focused. Um, and I just wanted to add, so when I have a client uh, session and it doesn't matter if it's on Zoom or if they're coming to the office, if they're running late and, and you can just tell, you can just feel the stress when they get on the call. I, I always will start, okay, looks like, you know, did you hit some traffic? Why are you late? Let's just get that all, let's just get that out of there so that we can now focus on what you want to focus on for your coaching. So I, I will have them run through and do the, do the finger pull. Um, and just, and then I, sh I always make them then do a little shake, it's like just shake, just shake it out and, and center back to, um, to the focus of their coaching. It's just amazing how helpful it can be. Yeah, and all those tools, the finger tapping or holding your finger and pulling each finger. If you are someone who is struggling sleeping at night, I will have people that come to me and say, I can't sleep. They'll choose one of those. Some of them might, well, you're just laying there in bed. You could just be laying there, grabbing the finger, pulling off, or gently tapping your fingers while you're laying there. And many people have come, I work with a lot of um, like PTSD with vets, and they have the night terrors and they will tap before they get in bed and they'll, they'll sleep through the night. They'll say, I, it was like I took a, a sleepy pill, but I didn't. It's just getting your brain in that relaxed state because a lot of times we'll wake up and our mind is racing. That will stop that by using those tools. So now we're going to have you guys go into some smaller groups and have a little bit um, deep deeper discussion around this. Uh, so you'll want to just take a moment and introduce yourselves. And we've got three questions for you. Um, and one is, did you realize before tonight how often you've been holding your breath? The second question for discussion will be, how do you feel about connecting your body responses to your daily faith practices? For example, tapping while in prayer or or taking relaxing deep breaths before beginning prayer. And then the third question is, will you use this new, will you use these new awarenesses and techniques? Um, when and where and who in your family might you share these with? Okay, so we're going to be, um... Thank you, Jen and Beth. We're going to be breaking off into groups now. And as soon as you see the word join, you can join that breakout room, okay? It comes up on your screen. Okay, so early in your report out.
Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> it's fun to watch everybody pop back in. I think Isn't that, that funny, Jennifer? Yeah, it was that magic, right? <laughs> back in. So Beth and I are very curious to hear what some of the insights or ahas were as you were discussing. I'll start with my group. Um, this is Jackie. And in my room, I had Janice, I had Lorraine, Kim, Maurice, Roxanne, and myself. And the response to the fact the, the first question was that, yeah, a lot of us didn't realize how often we are not breathing, right? Um, um, Burkita, and Burkita too was in my room. And Burkita noted that she was kind of conscious of that because she she works out a lot and um she was conscious of deep breathing and stuff like that so she she realized that because of her fitness that she she works on but most of us yeah yeah we didn't realize it is when we're breathing out out we realize how much we've been holding the breath in also for the second question about um tying it into our practices most people thought that a deep breathing would be an excellent tool to add to our daily um, spiritual time, our daily faith time, because of deep breathing. Um, Janice said that she, she would um, try, she's willing to try all of the, 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 the techniques. I personally mentioned that um, I think the tapping would distract me a bit. So I think the breathing would kind of calm me down more. But most people are willing to try the deep breathing along with um with with their um faith time their quiet time um what and the third question was yes definitely is going to share share these tools um kim said she would share it with her daughter who is like 19 and you know she has anxiety so she definitely going to share those tools with her um um jenny said that she has a sister who has problems sleeping so she definitely going to share the tools of um the pulling on the finger, the, the calming himself to help her with going to sleep. And she's inviting her to the session next week. So um, uh, Maurice said he's going to share them with his, 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 his children and his grandchildren. Um, most people were excited about the techniques and um, willing to share them with others. And I hope I haven't forgotten anything. So that most of that came out of our, um, our discussion. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Let me mute. <laughs> Anyone else want to share some of their insights? Okay. This is Denise. In my group, I had Donna, Roberta, Ollie, and Monique. Um, everybody um, knew about breathing deeply, but they never really connected it with them. Um, relaxation and they realize after the fact as Jack, Jackie said when they exhale okay I was holding my breath um diaphragmatic breathing with your tummy is usually difficult so that's a, one of the techniques that we have to perfect um one of our group members Ollie said that she's constantly moving and so we surmise that that's why she's so relaxed. She's always tapping and shaking and do. Okay. So subconsciously, she's doing the, um, the yeah, techniques. And, um, oh, Ollie also said that she enjoyed going to have a, a manicure and afterwards the, the person will that's pull her fingers and that relaxes her. So we can see how that works. Everybody agreed that they would share the, the techniques with their families and also use it at work, yeah. you know, to calm their anxieties. And Roberta said she will try tonight um, tapping the fingers to try to go to sleep early to see if that helps. Wonderful. 
you you reminded me too i you know ta children small children will have different tapping and, and we always tell them to stop it and maybe we shouldn't <laughs> maybe that's helping that 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 extra movement right oh there was one more thing roberta said that a minister told her what, what breathing um prior to prayer that you breathe in the holy spirit oh, and yes. you blow out the toxins or something like that so yeah. There's there's a there's a yeah there's a portion in the book where she goes through that in detail as well with breath so yes that's it's a beautiful section in the book same same idea very nice who else who else would like to share hi this is Lucy I'm um, excited to share so we had a, a small group a couple of people on the phone and Erica who was at work but um, tried to join us as best as she could via chat and also Eva and we talked just a little bit about how um, we had we all had um, some a few of us had experiences with anxiety and we kind of had our practices um, maybe it was pulling the finger, maybe it was tapping, or maybe it was breathing. But a lot of times when we're anxious, we just don't think about doing these things. And this was a, a very good reminder about how we might use these techniques and also share them. So that was a little bit about what my group talked about. Yeah, that's kind of how um, when I shared to do them more often throughout your day, maybe even when you're not stressed so that um, you don't get triggered as quickly. Or if you pay attention to those signals in your body, you know that stress is coming on to start that tool before it gets too late. Like you said, I mean, I'll even get in that space. Same with Jen. We'll forget about it. We'll be anxious or stressed. And we're like, wait a minute, use a tool. But yeah, once we get to that point of no return, sometimes we forget, but we can always bring ourselves back and remind ourselves. But the more you use them and implement them throughout your day, you'll find that um, you won't be as triggered, you won't stress out as much. Yeah, and you'll you'll shorten, so you'll still have periods of anxiety and you will, you'll, you'll catch yourself and you'll say, okay, I, why didn't I take a deep breath sooner? Why didn't I, but it, you'll shorten those periods. The, so you won't, you, we can't eliminate anxiety. We can't eliminate stress, it's gonna happen. But the more you are practicing, that, that's why we believe daily exercise is the same as physical. The better shape you're in, the easier it is to climb the flight of stairs. It's the same idea. So you're shortening those periods of um, discomfort. Yeah, who else would like to share? Any, any more sharing? Sure, I'll share. Um, my name is Erlene. Uh, we had a couple of people in our group who were sharing. Uh, the first question was, did you realize or do you realize how often you hold your breath, especially in stressful situations? And while some of us did not realize how often that happens, there were a few um, people who said that the deep breathing, the part of the deep breathing that is the breathing out, which they uh, sort of related to a sigh was something that they do very often, but in wherever they were, whether it's a work situation, home situation, uh, others around them did not receive that well. So they didn't think that that was a very productive or constructive way to release stress and probably may not do <laughs> that because of how it was received by others. Um, and then the other question was, uh, would they incorporate or would we incorporate tapping, uh, finger pulling, deep breathing? I think for the most part, everyone was sort of open to the deep breathing. But when it comes to the tapping, I feel like a lot of people in our group associated it, um, I don't want to say negatively, but associated it with behavior of, like you said earlier, autistic behavior. And that may, it, it, it didn't sit well with some. So they may not be as inclined to do that technique as much as they would the deep breathing. And then um, afterwards, we all um, thought it was a good idea 
to try to incorporate, especially in our, in our quiet time, a lot of the, not a lot of these techniques, but mostly the breathing technique um, and also share with family members. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, and I was gonna say, um, when you had mentioned the sigh, actually, if you think about it, when there are really people who are really stressed out, they will sigh a lot. So, th so that we're getting mixed up with that's a sigh for a different reason. Right. We're just going, or someone says something that's ridiculous and you sigh. It, it's not the same as releasing your breath. So maybe in that circumstance, it's not something they want to do around a lot of people because it may sound like a sigh, mm -hmm. but it's something they could do as an individual because sighing a lot is actually a sign of stress and holding mm -hmm. your breath when you mm -hmm. keep sighing. Um, and I, and I totally understand, um, what they're saying with the tapping and, and kind of linking it to autistic. Actually, it works really great for kids who are autistic because they do like that movement. When we go into schools, the reason it's so effective, you could do the breathing without someone realizing, but you're like Jen said, you could have your hand below your desk and you could be lightly tapping your fingers or this side of your hand. It doesn't have to be real aggressive or a lot, just slowly tapping that where, um, like I said, in schools or if you're at work and you had your hands below a desk, you're ready to give a speech or you were anxious in school or a lot of kids are on the bullying, I, they will tap and that will um, reduce that anxiety for them. So it's something that you don't necessarily, if it feels uncomfortable publicly having people see you do it or wondering, it is, it is something where you could even have your arms crossed and be tapping your fingers and no one would know. So there's ways to do it where it doesn't draw so much attention to you, if that makes sense. And again, I, like we said, you pick what tools work for you and what you're comfortable with. Um, when my husband and I first learned about it a decade ago, um, the doctor that had shown it to us, a holistic doctor, it was through a, a video and we got it. We just looked at each other and started laughing. We were like, you've got to be kidding me. Like this guy was a really good prankster and we thought he was pranking us. Like it wasn't real. So we actually called him and said, are you kidding me? Like you want us to tap? He said, yes, it's science backed and it works. And then the more we used it, we realized how, how much it was moving that energy for us. But again, like we said, you guys pick what feels comfortable for you and works best in your situation. Definitely take what works and, and leave the rest. One of, I did wanna to add too, a lot of times next week, we're gonna talk about meditation. And um, one of the things that it, when I work with people one-on-one -on -one and I take, we do a meditation, they'll find themselves yawning. And the reason that they find themselves yawning, and it'll be the middle of the day, is because they're, they're, they're finally relaxing and their brain is act, asking for the oxygen. Because again, they've been holding their breath throughout the day. And so they'll start apologizing. I'm sorry, I'm yawning. It's okay. Your brain is now, at, you're, you're now relaxed. You've shut your mind, the, the constant thoughts, you've been able to shut them down. So now that you can, your brain knows instinctively to take in the oxygen and it happens through a yawn. It, it, it really, that happens, you'd be surprised how often it happens. It's um, always surprising to them, but not to me, because I see it. So wonderful, any more sharing? Um, yes, um, I, I will share my group. I had Sister Barbara, Sister Raven, Brother Charles, and Sister Magdalene, and, um, for the first question, we were all basically um, unaware of the the, the not breathing. Um, well, <clears throat> except well, I, I I it's something that I was aware of, and it's something that um, I actually have a medical condition where I don't breathe properly. So I was mentioning to the group where I actually have a calendar invite um, three times a day that reminds me to breathe. So I will do like seven steps of deep breathing. And I also try to do it every night before I go to bed. Um, in terms of, um, will you use this technique? Um, we all agree that yes. I think Sister Barbara said that she would share it with her husband, her family. We all agree that we will do that. And I think Sister Barbara actually had a question. She said, um, uh, well, I guess, you know, I would leave her to ask that question. 
Um, but yes, it was um, the tapping also, it was new to us. Um, we didn't realize that tapping helps. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. That's our group. Wonderful. Thank you. Any others that want to share? Hi, this is um, Lola Hall. And <clears throat> I was in a group with um, Stephanie and um, Stephanie was going to, we had a very, you know, pretty good discussion and Stephanie agreed to share. So anyway, I have not heard from Stephanie, yeah. but I'll share what went on in our group. And so we had a lively discussion and uh, what we discussed was that you know, sometimes we're doing the deep breaths and not realizing that we were using these, um, you know, it was a technique, anxiety relieving technique. And so now that, you know, we've learned from you, you know, the deep breath and, you know, how to do it um, correctly to um, relieve the stress you know, that we'd be doing. And everyone was really um, said they would uh, do that. Um, the tapping, well, I got a full disclosure. So I said, I'm going to be sitting there and tapping in a meeting and somebody's going to be saying, you think uh, Lola is okay? <laughs> Does anybody want to talk to her? But then as we, um, you know, talked about it more, it's not that we're going to be tapping and, you know, but, you know, if you do it, you know, you know what you're doing, it, it relieves your stress. So we would uh, do that. And then we talked about, um, you know, the tapping for uh, prayer. And so it, we were, uh, you know, you know, as you kind of get into that, um, before, you know, you pray that it's good, you know, as you're doing that, you, you're preparing yourself to talk to God. And it's amazing, one of the um, members of our group, you know, who said when she prayed, she kind of clasped her hand and it was so tight. So she says, now she know, you know, how to just, um, you know, gently prepare herself to talk to God. And um, a lot of people said that, uh, you know, they would really share it with them. Then we talked about the shaking. And, you know, I shared with the group that I recently retired. And, you know, when you have found that if you don't, there's no rush, if you don't do something today, oh, there's always tomorrow. But I said that that's not the right way to be if you, you should stay on task. But I also told them that I had a daughter and if she saw me there flailing my hand and she'd say, mom, should I call someone? Is everything okay with you? But um, the, the big picture is that you do that, you know, and you kind of prepare yourself. So you know, we all felt that the techniques were really good and that we would be willing to, to share them with um, people, except the shaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other shares? So I was in Kurt's, uh, Kurt's class and I've seen the movements, the tapping, and the pulling of fingers in isolation, but I never quite put it together uh, in terms of some kind of scientific connection. So uh, that really honed everything together for me today. And I also question, now it all makes sense when I hear about oxygen bars in Manhattan that people lunch hour go out to oxygen bars, so everything's kind of making sense. The shaking out the hands uh, that I have practice. I've seen that before, shaking out the hands, but um, I'm going to tell you, you work magic tonight. You know why you work magic tonight? Because I had a really intense day and I kept my camera off when I came on because I was feeling so fatigued. I moved from one room to the other because of the internet and my husband said, why don't you just sit up at the dining table? I said, I just need to stretch out right now. Do you know once I started listening to you, I decided to sit up 
I'm telling you. And I started tapping my fingers and it was like magic. I was so refreshed. I kept saying to you, it works, it works, it works, <laughs> it works. Yes, I mean, I was so refreshed just going through the motions with you. So I'm a testimony that it works. <laughs> beautiful thank you yeah thank you for that share yeah very nice anyone else anyone else want to share all right so uh, this is divine i had uh, reverend o'connor Bennett, uh margaret sharon adika and one other person with a phone number and a three one 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 um um so we discussed the first question was the answer that everybody gave was that the real the have used, uh, they realize how breathing helps them relax and release uh, anxiety. Um, and most people say that especially when they are called on to pray, for instance, they do have an anxiety and when they're taking deep breaths, sometimes they are able to uh, pray uh, and release that sort of anxiety they had in them before they were called upon to pray. Um, in connecting the body to response, the body response to this exercise, some people mentioned that walking do help them um, to relax and get rid of anxiety. Uh, some people say they do pull their finger, and I said I use I bite my finger most of the time, which is a bad habit. Habit. Um, the last question we didn't get to, we didn't finish completely, but um, we did mention that we something that we will all practice learn to practice to use when we have to pray or when we are called upon to have any major communication with people in a life setting thank you thank you so i want to be conscious of time but um anyone else want to just something that they're just making sure they want to share or any questions regarding any of it So I have a question with the finger tapping, mm -hmm. does it, and you, you mentioned on the side of the finger where you typically get a hangnail. So right. um, would it make a difference on any other part of the finger or that's, that's kind of where the connection runs to the brain? Right. So that's where our energy channels run on those sides where the where you get a hangnail, I guess, on the side of your fingers tapping. Um, so that's where, yes, by you tapping that is making that connection with the certain organ cells in your body. Those are the points. Yeah. And would it matter if you did it in order, if you did particular fingers? Um, yep, and that doesn't matter how many times or if you just sat and tapped only on the first finger or the second. Um, just tap that point. There's, like I said, if you, if you guys got off and looked up emotional freedom technique or tapping, there's actually several points on your face. There's a long version of tapping. There's one that's right below if you feel where your collarbones are. This point is a big point for a lot of people. They will just tap here. It's very calming. Um, it's connected to our kidney points. And it's just, it, that can just tapping that. So there's not a, a right or wrong. It doesn't matter how many fingers or how many times, or if you just choose one, or I call it like a sweet spot. Um, like Jen likes to just tap this one a lot. I will tap my collarbone point, right below my collarbone point. Um, yeah, like I said, there's there's a whole myriad. There's so many on your face and hands, but it's just for the short period of time we had, we wanted to give it just um, something that you could walk away with and use. And I know a lot of people are thinking, like, can we go in a classroom? What, who's going to sit there and be tapping in the class like this? Like you said, yeah, everyone's going to be looking at them, wondering what they're doing. I get that. That's where they came up with where you could tap on your fingers where someone wouldn't know. It could be below a table or use it when, you, um, you know, when you're know when you crossing your arms. So it's not something we're necessarily saying you, you know, to do in public. The breathing you could get away with, but the tapping, if you did it, 
you had a stressful day at work, like Barbara was talking, she just had a really rough day. So then come home and take a few minutes just to tap, let all of those thoughts about work, what you were thinking, how you felt about it, filter through your head while you're tapping, and that's what will help release that. That's probably what happened to Barbara. She's tapping, she's letting go of that day she had. One of the things that I noticed too, Russell, is that um, because I use this so often that when something comes up that I find myself, and, and often it's in public, I mean, often that's where we're getting our anxiety. If I just start on the first couple fingers, I'll, I can just feel my, my heartbeat come down. You know, I can just, and I don't, I don't really get past more than the first couple fingers because it's become so automatic that this brings me back to that feeling of calm so quickly that you know i don't get much further than that now if i'm if i'm wanting to as part of the practice um you know during my morning during my morning quiet time i will often start it with the tapping just so that i'm continuing to keep that connection so in coaching we talk a lot about you know creating that habit in in our minds and so this starts to become so associated with the quiet time that I don't have to do it for more than a few seconds. And now I'm, now I'm back centered with whatever's going on. Yeah. I hope that it, does that answer your question? Is that helpful? Yes, um, absolutely. Particularly. Yes. Thank you so much. It does. Great. Anyone else? Any other questions? Okay, so if there are no other questions, let, me, let us thank Beth and Jennifer for this wonderful beginning to this journey of releasing anxiety and moving towards wellness. And as you see, it's different, but the, the aim of this whole series is to provide all of us with tools that can enhance how we live our journey. I want to celebrate our team that put this together. And again, Jackie, Karen, Kiara, Ishmael, Carla, and Reverend Chris. And especially to thank all our facilitators who work so hard with our groups and to welcome all the people who are not normally at First Church who joined us. If you could think about somebody who this could be helpful for. You have a whole week to invite them. It could be a colleague, a family member, a neighbor. There are more techniques which will help all of us during the next week. Also next week, there's no debate competition, so people should be able to focus on this. But let me thank all of us for joining, and I'm gonna pray. And then you get to shake for one minute and then go to the debate if you choose. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for the gift of our human bodies and for the marvelous way in which you connected body, mind, and spirit. Oh God, help us, Lord, to figure out how to harness the power and the strength of our bodies so that we may be whole. Thank you for the learning tonight. Thank you for all who participated and for our teachers and guide us individually and collectively so that we might move to wholeness. This we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you everybody for joining us and enjoy your evening. Yeah, and I'm gonna quick add on what um, Pastor O'Connor said was, if, you're wa if you choose to watch the debate, maybe tap while you're watching and move, the <laughs> move those emotions through, all right? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And thank you, Panya, for hosting us. Yes, you're welcome. Nice job.
Good night.